The Delaware County Literacy Council was formed 45 years ago by community members in Chester, Pennsylvania, who noticed their neighbors were struggling with reading, writing, and math. In the last 45 years, over 20,000 adults have come to the Literacy Council to achieve their goals. Today, as then, the Literacy Council staff and volunteers meet adult students where they are. Some are new immigrants seeking English language skills so they can restart careers they pursued in their home countries. Some are citizens returning from incarceration who are ready for a second chance. Some never finish high school and hope to earn their GED. And some are working hard to overcome challenges and just need a little encouragement and a safe space to learn. These dedicated adults study basic literacy, English as a second language, ESL, and GED preparation, all for free, so that they can improve their lives and thrive in the workplace and the community. Good evening. My name is Pat Gunnan, and I am the Executive Director of Delaware County Literacy Council, and welcome to the Expert Academy Telethon. I first want to congratulate all of this year's Champions of Adult Literacy. Tamaji Kantanger, Neighbor to Neighbor, and Dr. Monica Taylor. They truly deserve to be honored. Secondly, I want to thank all of our experts and special guests who have given so generously to make this year's telethon an enriching and entertaining experience. You'll meet them in just a little bit. A special thanks goes out to Lucy Bustamante from NBC10 Telemundo 62 for hosting our event tonight. The work that we do day in and day out at Delaware County Literacy Council has a great impact on the adults who come to us in hopes of improving their lives. Imagine what learning from these experts would be like if you couldn't read the recipes or the lyrics, or if you didn't understand English or the digital world. These are challenges faced by adults who study at the Literacy Council. Some are able to read, but struggle with comprehension and vocabulary. Some, like past student champion Tatiana, come to the U.S. knowing only a handful of English words. DCLC meets them where they are and provides a safe place to learn, even if it's in a Zoom classroom. I urge you to keep these students in mind as you learn from the experts this evening. Thank you, everyone, and now on with the show. Hi, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Delaware County Literacy Council's Expert Academy Telethon. I'm Lucy Bustamante of NBC10 Telemundo 62, and I am a proud resident of Haverford, Delaware County, and I'm really excited to be here this evening for a really special cause. I bring you greetings from DCLC's board of directors, their staff members, volunteers, and of course, their students. We wish we could gather in person this year, and I know that day is going to come, but for now, we're just going to do our best to keep everyone safe and healthy. So this evening's celebration of adult literacy is coming to you online, hopefully for the last year. Delaware County Literacy Council, or DCLC, as we sometimes call it, provides free literacy instruction to adults in Delaware County, adults who didn't finish high school, adult immigrants who need to learn English, and adults who want to improve their skills so they can be better parents, workers and community members. As a child of political refugees from Cuba, my siblings and I learned English as young children, Spanish being our first language in this country. We were very used to translating for our parents as they navigated running their own tailor business with very broken English. So I know that having allies like the Delco Literacy Council is crucial to helping all of us make a healthy and productive transition into life and creating genuine friendships and also successful kids. So thank you for your kind mission and your participation tonight. This evening, we will be celebrating the 2021 Champions of Adult Literacy and learning from some experts who have truly phenomenal information to share and also who have very strong ties to Delaware County. So I know I'm looking forward to the Comedy Writing Workshop where we're going to learn from Phil Rosenthal, the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond. And by the way, Phil will be interviewed by his wife, Monica, who plays Amy on the sitcom, and she is from Delaware County. So 
it should be a very exciting evening of learning and fun with a few surprises along the way. Also, remember that the reason we have gathered today this evening is to support the Literacy Council with our donations. So you can go to delcoliteracy.org to do your part. So this is a telethon and we want all of you out there to join. So throughout the evening, we're going to be checking in to see how we're doing in terms of donations. And then, of course, we have an ambitious goal this year of raising $50 thousand dollars and with your help I know we can get there so let's start learning from the experts to kick us off is a performer who has appeared on Broadway and in film and in television she was born and raised right here in Delaware County and her workshop is called anyone can sing please help me in welcoming Kathy Deach hi everyone and welcome to the telethon. I'm Kathy Deach. I'm a native of Ridley Park, Pennsylvania in Delaware County. Some call us Leadham Estates off the 420 Highway. You might know that well. I um, was proud to live there until I went to college and I still have some family who's over there. So I love this cause. I love that I got asked to take part and I'm gonna talk a little bit about singing, but they asked me if I could show you a little bit about singing first kind of basically to like show that I kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I happened to be in a couple of Broadway shows, one of which was a little show called Wicked that you might know. I was in the original company. Thank you for the platinum album. And uh, my first Broadway show was Footloose. I got to play Earlene in Footloose and I used this song to audition. I'm just going to give you a little acapella audition cut of what I used to get into that show. You better think, think about what you're trying to do to me. Oh, you better think, let your mind go, let yourself be free. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go way, all way back when. I didn't even know you, you could have been a too much more than 10. Now, I ain't no psychiatrist, ain't no doctor with degrees. But it don't take too much high Q to see what you're doing to me. Oh, you better think. Think about what you're trying to do to me, yeah, I think. Am I going to let yourself be free? Oh, freedom, oh, freedom. Give us some freedom, oh, freedom, yeah. <laughs> it's always weird singing a cappella, but there you go. Uh, I sang that and I got to be in a Broadway show. It's pretty amazing. I think my Delaware County accent definitely helped me with that, by the way. Philly accents are very good to help project your voice and not hurt it. I'm just saying. So I'm not here to give you crazy insider tips on how to be on Broadway. I mean, this could help you get there. But the truth is, is that if you're somebody who sings in a choir or sings in the shower or would like to be a little better at their karaoke song on Tuesday nights, there are things about our voices that are universal. And I wanted to call this workshop Anyone Can Sing because anyone can sing. When I was performing on Broadway, I got to work with a company called Broadway Classroom and I started to teach. I started to teach workshops. And then I started teaching at a BFA program that got us training in something called complete vocal technique. Now, I just want to say that I am not affiliated with the school at all. I am not an official CBT teacher, but everything that I have learned from them has been completely beneficial to my teaching, and I highly recommend it. There's an app for that, is that all I will say. And it um, came out of scientists in Denmark who studied the voice for seven years using all kinds of scans, MRIs, while people were singing, what happens in the brain, what happens with certain muscles, what vowels make certain positions, and uh, in your tongue, in your resonance. So I found out basically from them that anyone can sing. Basically, CVT is a technique about releasing and letting go of tension. So I know that releasing tension is really hard, but the great news is, is that once you do, the singing is so easy. You realize making noise is so easy and we all make noise. So another thing about singing is that um, people think of 
us having like breaks in our voices like my voice only goes up to this certain point and then it stops and that's actually not true either your vocal cords are the length that they are and they vibrate at certain places where they vibrate it's my vocal cords don't really look much different than yours so there are a series of exercises that you, you can go through to sort of test that theory which brings me to my volunteers. I'm so excited to bring on to this amazing call Monica Taylor and Pat Gunnan, who are going to help me. Hello! How mm -hmm. are you, Love Elise? Are you Love Elise good? <laughs> that's good, that's good. Are you ready to make some noise? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Do you believe everything that I've told you so far? 100%. May yes. Monica, Monica feels a little skeptical. She's like, <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. One of the first things I want you to do, I want to take you through your entire range from the very top to the very bottom. Now, like I said, there are different modes of singing. The one that actually you can sing in this mode your entire range up and down is called neutral mode and if you've had any other kind of voice lessons i don't know if you guys have done choir but uh they usually call it head voice probably because it feels really floaty and the sound kind of feels like it's like up here i like to say it's like a balloon on a string that's what the sound feels like but uh it isn't just the upper part of your range you can be in neutral all the way up and all the way down and there's no projection it doesn't get loud it's you know stays at medium and there are two vowels that we make that go from the very very tippy top to the very bottom and can only be sung in neutral and that is a pure e vowel e e e or a pure u vowel hoo, hoo. And I'm talking like an ooh, not ew, which is a very Delaware County thing to do. I don't know if you guys are from Delco, but we we like to say ew a lot when we're supposed to be going ooh. We we, we pronounce our ewes, right? So um, so no cheating. We have to really act like an owl when we do this exercise, okay? And Monica, I'm gonna make you go first. I want you to go from the very very tippy top of your range to the very bottom, and I can actually demonstrate for you both once, okay? Let's see if I can do this. That's a bomb at the end. You might um, hear my dog in the background because he really likes singing too. So <laughs> he's laying down, but he he'll make a little noise. So Monica, do you want to go for it and try it? Sure. Let's hear All it. Right. Oh! That's all I have. Yes! Excellent! Excellent job. High five. Okay. So um, <laughs> so Pat, I don't know, Monica. Monica did a very big range. Do you think you can unmute and let's hear it? Let's do it. Oh, that was wrong. <clears throat> that was not wrong. Like a sigh yeah. at the top. Go all the way up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh. <laughs> Good. Very, very good. Excellent. Excellent. Are you sure you're not in the choir, Pat? <laughs> <laughs> not after that first note, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to kick you out. They're not going to kick you out. So, um, so that's great. So what was the next thing I want? Oh, next thing I want to do. So we have this interesting thing. So that wasn't really projected, right? Do you guys feel how that was like really like Oh yeah, I'm not like blowing anybody's eardrums out. I'm just keeping that really centered and really like not not fancy, not trying to get someone's attention across the street because I all know that we can project when we want to. Yes. Hey, like get out of my car or whatever. You know, we you can tell the neighborhood I live in when I say that. <laughs> That's the first thing I would say. Anyway, so we all know we can project our voices. So this is what happens when we decide to project our voice. CVT calls it twang, and it's, it, it creates that metallic sound to sound, right? So neutral wasn't really like like pingy. It, 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 it was pretty like warm and soft. So when we wanted something to project and really like they say, you know, hit the back of the house, 
when you're talking about singing in theater, right? Make your voice go all the way to the back. They're talking about using twang. Now, twang, if ever, can you guys, Pat and Monkey, can you just swallow for me? Do it again for me. Okay, we all just swallowed. So you just use your epiglottal level. And we know our bronchial tube is next to our esophagus. And when we swallow, this little epiglottal level comes over so we don't choke. You know, we say, oh, went down the wrong pipe when you choke on drinking water too fast or something like that. That's literally what they mean. It's like, oh, my bronchial tube's getting covered so food can go down my esophagus. The other function of this epiglottal level is that it goes in just half, like just a little bit. It presses in. So the inside of your throat, which is shaped like a cylinder, all of a sudden, if this gets pressed in, it becomes a trumpet. So the sound goes bing. Yeah, so I'm going to sing once without using my twang, and then I'm going to sing with it, and you tell me if you hear the difference, yeah? Ah, ah, you hear the difference? Literally, I just decided. I decided to do that. But there are some noises you can make in order to engage your twang if you're not used to projecting your voice. Yeah. So, Pat, this time you're going to go first, okay? Okay. Can you make a sound like a car for me? And I will go first so you know what I'm talking about. You'll hear my nephews do it constantly. They're five and six. Can you make that noise for me? Good. Now, did you feel that little thing happen? Did you feel your epiglottal level? Okay. Do it again, and this time pay attention. Do it one more time. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, like a little bit, right? It's yeah. not. It doesn't hurt at all, right? It's just like right. a tension you never think about. Like, you're like, yeah. oh, there's a little pressure, but... Yeah, I never think about it because I swallow all the time, yeah? So that's one of the noise. You just use your twang. Good job. So, Monica, are you ready? All right. Can you cackle like a wicked witch, like old school? <laughs> can you do that for me? <laughs> okay. Can you get nastier with it? Can you get stankier with it? Can you get, like, maybe even get your nostrils flaring a little bit? <laughs> Okay, I'll try. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> good, good. Can you quack like a duck? Quack. Quack. Yeah. So you just used it. Did you get? Did you feel it at all? Do you feel the difference? A little bit, I think. A little bit? A little bit? All right. Now, for both of you, I want you to do this. I want you to sing an ah, just like I did. Sing an ah in neutral, like we just practiced. Ah, uh, and then I want you to project it. Ah, uh, see if you can tap into those two things, yeah? Why don't Pat, you go first. We'll, we'll mute. Ah, uh, is that right? Can you give, can you do two for me? Can you do one not projected and one projected? Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. Uh, Okay, good, good. Although I feel there is more, um, what did my teacher used to say? There's more corn in them fields. <laughs> you have more projection in you. I know, Pat, you're just being kind. Okay, Monica, you got it? Let's unmute and do it. Here we go. So, ah, uh, ah, uh, and I love that Pat held them out for eight counts or whatever he did, but you don't have to. You could do them as long as you need. They could be short. Uh, uh. Great. Can you do them on the same note? Can you do the same exact note? The other one, when you got higher, you were like, oh, I'll go higher and I'll be louder, which is true, but it's kind of cheating a little bit. Yeah. So can you do the same exact note? Uh, uh, but by the way, it could be whatever note you want. I don't care. Uh, uh. Good, good. Is it all making you think now? Everybody's like all thinking. 
Okay, excellent. Yes, good job. Good job all around. Yes, good job, guys. So there's one more thing. Oh, I wore the worst necklace for this. Uh, I want us to talk about overdrive. So overdrive is the mode when you think about um, Johnny could only sing one note and the note he sang was this. Oh, uh, when you think about like old school Ethel Merman Broadway belters. That's what overdrive is. Yes, it's like literally sending sound through your chest. And by the way, it doesn't go that high. It can. Some people are like crazy high at it. But most people, it's it's a little bit more in your like register that's a little lower. Yeah, like you feel a little brassier. And this one can also project. Can you guys just send sound to your chest? I'm going to do it. And then I want you to repeat, yeah? And we can do one at a time. Monica, you'll go first this time. Oh, uh, actually, even O is a better vowel. Oh, so literally my tapping of my chest is what's making the the sound vibrate, okay? Do you think you could do that for me, Monica? Go for it. Oh. Great. Now do it and tap. Do it one more time. Go Oh. Good. Did you feel it vibrate down there? Yes. Yeah, good job. Good job. That's overdrive. Pat, I, you already showed this off to me. Do you think you can do it down there? Can you tap on your chest and make sure you're set, sending your sound through, the, through your sternum? Oh. Okay, now I don't want you to necessarily do vibrato, which is, is, which is level two. We're not even doing level two today, but Pat's ready to graduate. So can you just straight tone no vibrato only from tapping does the sound shake oh almost like when you were kids and we would like hit our mouths yeah oh. yes that's it pat did you feel that excellent excellent well i think i think that's it you guys you're the best i hope you learned something Yes, you know how to safely project. You know how to use your lower register oh, to do your your yelp into the void if you ever need to. Now you guys know how to. Um, Monica, we're going to see more of you later. And Pat, thank you so much. And welcome as executive director to Delaware County Literacy Council. It's so exciting. Thank you. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Kathy. So we went through some technical stuff what's happening inside your body when you sing. But a lot of singing has to do with what you're thinking about, what you're feeling. And when you are free to express, that's when your voice is the most free. So I always like to tell people, if they are auditioning for something, at any level, community theater all the way up to Broadway show, it has to be something that you really love to sing because it says something that you want to say. And that's the beautiful thing about the work that the Literacy, Literacy Council does. They literally help people have the tools to communicate and to express themselves. And it's such a worthy cause. Is there anything more worthy than that to give people their voice? So give if you can. It is delcoliteracy.org that's o-r-g at the end and um i'm just honored that i was asked to be a part of this and as we say on the gershwin stage at wicked because i knew you because i knew you i have been changed for good. Have a great night. That was amazing. Pat and Monica were very brave to sing on camera like that. And now we have the opportunity to meet one of our 2021 champions of adult literacy. To present the 2021 Community Champion Award, please welcome DCLC instructor Dwayne Belgrave Sr. And to accept the award, please welcome Beverly Donaldson, Executive Director of Neighbor to Neighbor Community Development Corporation in Sharon Hill. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Um, it's my great privilege to introduce Beverly Donaldson, the Executive Director of Neighbor to Neighbor Community Development Corporation located in Sharon Hill. And it's my honor to present to her 
uh, the 2021 Community Champion of Literacy Award given by Delaware County Literacy Council. Um, and uh, Neighbor to Neighbor is a very deserving uh, organization. They do a lot in the community, work with young folks. Young people is also work, works with adults. I've had the privilege as a, I am an instructor, GED instructor. I've had the opportunity to teach at her location. And she's been very, uh, very, very wonderful host and very inviting. And I want to, uh, just my pleasure to, 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 uh, to work with her. Ms. Bev, I want to just turn it over to you. And uh, again, congratulations for, for being our 2021 recipient of this award. Thank you so much, Dwayne. And thank you for the uh, Literacy Council for uh, recognizing Neighbor to Neighbor as a community champion of adult literacy. Um, our organization has been in, uh, here in Sharon Hill since uh, 1995. We've been doing great work in the community, hopefully. Well, I guess we have because we've been here for as long as we have. Our main focus today is for our literacy program. Along with taking the uh, GED and preparing for GED, we have um, an authorized Pearson View Test Center where once the uh, student finishes their D GED prep, they can come right here to take their GED exam, um, a place that they'll be familiar with, and um, they can go from there. They can, the sky's the limit for them, and we're here to help them reach their goals. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you again. All right. Congratulations to Neighbor to Neighbor. Thank you all for the wonderful work that you do. If you're enjoying seeing all these inspiring people and guests and champions, remember guys, we need you. Go to delcoliteracy.org and that is where they make it very easy for you to donate your money. You can even purchase a premium package and get a personal session with one of tonight's experts. Can you imagine? learning from these professionals. So we're gonna see exactly how things are going so far. And also take a look at the fundraising thermometer. Here it is. Good evening, everyone. I am Kevin Morton, and I am part of the DC LC staff. Alison, Robert, and I will be chatting throughout the evening to let you know the progress. As Lucy said, $50,000. We have many generous supporters, so I'm sure we will reach, we will surpass our goal of $50,000. You can do your part by going to delcoliteracy.org and clicking the donate button. As you see so far, we are at 7,493 cents. We can do, we can do better. Remember to donate at delcoliteracy.org. The link for the premium package is there as well. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Guys, thank you so much. Keep those donations coming in. A lot of people need your support. So now, remember how we said that we were going to have some surprises? Well, this is it. As you know, we're raising money for the Delaware County Literacy Council. And all of our experts have ties to Delaware County. Well, this next person literally put Delaware County, not to mention our trademark accent, on the map with the recent Emmy-winning HBO series, Mayor of Easttown. So Brad Inglesby, he is a graduate of Illinois University. He got his master's degree in screenwriting from the American Film Institute in Los Angeles and has written the films Run All Night, American Woman, The Way Back, and our friend starring Casey Affleck, John Siegel, and Dakota Johnson. Major star power here. Now, you might know him as the creator, producer, and writer of Mayor of Easttown, so starring Kate Winslet. If you watched the Emmys last month, you probably heard Kate and other actors thank him from the podium. Well, guess what? He is here, and he's going to share a message of support for the Delaware Literacy Council and tonight's event. Welcome, Brad Inglesby. Hey everyone, it's Brad Inglesby. Uh, I'm in Irvine, California at the moment, but have lots of ties to Delaware County and Chester County. Um, in fact, I just wrote a show about the area. It's called Mayor of Easttown. Um, and uh, I've been hanging out here in Irvine, working on a bunch of writing projects, 
and uh, but all of them, they all seem to be about the area and writing about home, which always excites me the most. Um, I'm here tonight to ask you to ask for your help in supporting adult literacy. Um, I know myself how important it was as a child to read stories and to learn about how stories impact people emotionally. Um, and uh, it was such an important part of my childhood. And, and I know right now what it meant to me and how important it is to encourage people to, uh, of any age really, to you know, seek out you know, books and learn uh, and what that could mean in terms of second chances and also opportunities in life and just how important it is. So if you're wondering what you can do to help, well, don't just watch this telethon. You can also donate at www.telcoliteracy.org. That's www.telcoliteracy.org. Thank you so much, Brad. Follow his advice, guys. Go to delcoliteracy.org, show your support. And of course, remember, you can have access to these people if you donate. And we're ready for our next expert workshop. This one I'm really looking forward to. Chef Alex Garfinkel, who started his business out of his parents' kitchen in Wallingford, Pennsylvania. He's gonna show us how to prepare tapas three ways. Alex is the chef and co-owner of Balboa Catering in Philadelphia, and he really, really knows his stuff. So without further ado, let's get cooking. Hi, my name is Alex Scarfinkel, and I'm the chef and owner of Balboa Catering, and I'm here to cook some food with you. I'm here to share some of my favorite dishes from Spain with you, along with some tips and tricks along the way. The first dish we're going to make tonight is called escalivada. Uh, it is, can be any number of vegetables that have been slowly cooked and uh, delicately prepared and marinated that's usually served on top of a freshly sliced baguette and traditionally served with a, a young chev, goat cheese, uh, mixed with thyme and roasted garlic. Today we're going to do that with roasted and marinated red bell peppers, which is one of my favorites. And lastly, we're going to do a quick snack with some fresh peaches and a Monte Nebro cheese on a little charcoal cracker that we made. So the first thing before we get into making the escalivada is we're going to marinate some lamb loin for tonight's uh, entree dish we're making. Here we have some cleaned uh, lamb loin uh, that I marinate in something called Shio Koji. Shio Koji is an amazing product that can help break down and marinate proteins. Uh, pickled vegetables. Uh, we use it a lot of, in our cooking. It has a lot of uh, deep umami flavor uh, notes to it. Uh, it's also um, a little bit on the salty side. So it's great for marinating fish and meats. And we just, before uh, we start today, we put a little bit, about a tablespoon on top of the lamb loin here and let it sit and marinate. This is in, in lieu of salting it ahead of time. We are also going to take something called a yuzu koshu, which is this uh, condiment here. And right next to it, we also have something called a, uh, a pepper koshu. Uh, it is a preserve also made with koji. This is made with the yuzu zest and koji rice and a lot of salt, about seven to eight percent by weight. And then the pepper koji is made with a, a lot of uh, red chili peppers without the citrus zest. So we are going to take a little bit of the yuzu. This is very spicy. going to delicately brush it on. We're going to brush it on both sides. And let that marinate in there. For sake of comparison, we're going to use the red koshu on the other one. And our taste testers tonight, my parents, Amy and Don Garfinkel, will get to tell me which one they like better. Just about a teaspoon or so per loin. So we're going to let this rest and sit out at room temperature for the next 15 minutes while we cook some other things. We roasted peppers uh, earlier and we have them here in this bowl. And one other quick thing I can show you is uh, traditionally people roast their peppers straight over the fire, which is fine, or just in the oven hole like this. I find a nice uh, happy balance uh, when you slice the bottoms off and the tops off. This will allow a little bit of steam to escape and it will sit flat. We can then put a little bit of canola oil on the skin to help it roast before popping it in the oven. So we're just going to pop this in the oven and roast this off. So here we have our finished roasted red peppers. 
Uh, after they come out of the oven, we put them in a mixing bowl and put some plastic wrap on top. That allow them to steam and it will help us get the skin to come right off. So as you can see, the skin's peeling right off. This step where you put them in the mixing bowl and let them steam for at least 15, 20 minutes uh, is definitely critical or else you will be standing here all day trying to pull the skin off. There we have it. Peel of bell peppers. We're then gonna remove the seeds. You don't have to remove all the seeds. It's, it's an aesthetic decision that each of us can make for ourselves. So you wanna make sure as you're looking at your roasted red bell peppers, uh, you, they, they should appear to be roasted. You can definitely, uh, when you're doing them straight on the fire, they can be undercooked and they're gonna feel a little more firm. Then you can also uh, overcook your bell pepper. So you, so you really wanna find the nice medium where the skin is coming off and the peppers are nice and soft. Starting to get nice and sweet. All right, once we have our clean peppers, then we're just gonna do a quick julienne. And uh, a julienne is a, the French name for a, uh, a thin slice. And then we're gonna put them right back into this mixing bowl here. The next step is to marinate the peppers. So for that, we roasted some garlic by putting the whole head of garlic with the tip cut off into a small little metal, metal container with a little bit of oil, a little bit of water, and just wrapped up in tin foil. We roasted that in the oven at 300 degrees for an hour and a half till it came out golden brown as, as we see here. So we're just gonna peel the cloves out and we're just gonna pop about three of these cloves right into this mixing bowl with the peppers. The rest of the garlic we wanna save for the roasted uh, garlic shed that we're gonna be making in a, in a second. So outside the roasted garlic, we're gonna need a hefty amount of olive oil. We are using a Bataluco olive oil. So we're gonna put about two ounces of olive oil into there. We're gonna make sure to add some fresh cracked black pepper, a little bit of kosher salt, roughly about a half a teaspoon. A little bit of nice aged sherry vinegar, about a half a tablespoon. And lastly, some picked thyme. So you can pick it right in there. So you just need about four or five sprigs of thyme. You're gonna peel the small leaves off of the sprigs. We're just gonna mix it around. We're gonna make sure that we take a spoon, in this case, a little spatula, and we're gonna smash the roasted garlic in there. There's one more thing that goes into this marinated uh, pepper mixture. That's some fresh parsley. Now, if you're gonna make this ahead of time, you can make this a couple of days ahead of time and let it marinate in your fridge. I wouldn't suggest uh, adding the parsley until the day that you're going to enjoy it. Because we're gonna enjoy this in a little bit, we're gonna add it right now. So we have some picked parsley here. We're gonna grab a little bunch. We're gonna roll it up into a small ball and keeping it tightly in place with our fingers. And it's a very fine slice. It's called a chiffonade. You wanna use your knuckles to guide your knife so you're careful not to cut your fingers. A lot of parsley goes into this. The acid and the peppers are gonna to start to cook the parsley. So it does need a little bit of time in with the mix. Next up, we have to make our roasted garlic chev. For the spread, we have some roasted garlic goat cheese in our food processor. You can do this by hand in a mixing bowl or in a blender as well. We're gonna add the remainder of our roasted garlic from our one head. We are gonna add some more picked thyme. Or in Spain, they will say tomillo. 
about four or five sprigs again. Should be enough for this. You'd be surprised what a little bit of time, how far that goes. A little bit of salt, we should season everything. Some cracked black pepper. A little bit of olive oil. And we're gonna whip it in here. We're gonna let this go about two minutes and let it just whip and aerate before taking it out. I'm gonna add a little fresh parsley to this as well, just at the end. And then of course we have to taste it. Delicious. We're gonna take it out and put it into our deli pine container here for use in just a second. This stuff will last in your fridge for up to a week if well wrapped and protected. So we're gonna finish uh, making the escalivada bite right now. We have a fresh baguette over here. We're just gonna cut uh, some bias slices. We're going to put a little bit of uh, olive oil on both sides and we're gonna grill them off on our grill pan. So we have a hot grill pan here. Just gonna char it. In this pot right here, we have a little bit of a uh, warm onion uh, tapenade as a second type of escalivado that we're making. Uh, we did this one in homage to French onion soups everywhere. So we uh, caramelized uh, a lot of onions and brought them down like we were making French onion soup. And then we cooked on top of that a very decadent chicken uh, demi stock. So all the flavors of French onion soup are compressed into uh, the small amount of uh, condiment that goes on top of toast. And you can caramelize some nice aged uh, Swiss cheese or Gruyere to finish it off. So lightly toasted bread on both sides. Let's go back over here. Here we have our grilled bread and we're gonna make two different types of escalivada for you to try today. So the first type, we have our roasted garlic uh, chev. We're gonna liberally spread that onto the warm toast. You can really smell all those flavors coming out now when it hits the heat. Then, We're gonna add the marinade roasted red peppers. For the second bite, we have the French onion soup toast. We have our onions here, deeply caramelized with chicken stock, thyme and cherry vinegar. Smells like French onion soup. It's incredible. And then we have a really nice cave aged truffle infused cheese here. Just gonna lay some of this cheese on top. Then, and there you have it. So what we have here is some uh, amazing marinated lamb loin along with uh, some seasonal spring vegetables, some spring onions, and uh, baby purple carrots. So first we're gonna slice our spring onions in half and our carrots in half so they cook a little quicker. And we have a nice flush side to char them on in our cast iron pans. We have our grill pan on high and we're gonna grill off the lamb loins on both sides, just let them rest for about 10 to 15 minutes for slicing. 
and we will finish our vegetables in a uh, little smoker that we have, a tabletop smoker, just to give them a, a touch of smoke uh, to finish the plate. We like to add weights to certain vegetables to make sure that the flush side of the vegetable gets a nice clean sear. Uh, so we like to use other cast iron pans and we're just putting them on top of the carrots uh, to make sure that they, uh, they cook evenly. To make sure we don't get any sticking for the lamb loin, we're going to make sure that we brush oil over our grates. So here we have lamb mary and shio and yuzu koshu with a little bit of golden tomato emulsion, black sesame vinaigrette, arugula pudding, some charred spring onions and baby carrots along with a fresh heirloom tomato salad. So we're going to do a really quick snack or a pincho if you're in northern Spain. We have some delicious ripe uh, peaches, uh, Monte Nebro uh, goat's uh, milk cheese and some charcoal uh, crackers we have here. We're just going to slice into the stone fruit here around the pit. I'm going to slice little sashimi style slices. To go on top of the bites. Mmm. Very fresh. And take some of the Monte Nebro cheese. I'm just gonna smear some on. The imperfection in this process is a, can be part of the beauty of it. 
Sometimes it's nice when everything looks the same. Sometimes it's nice when everything looks a little, a little different. So we have our peach bites here with the Monte Nevero cheese and a little bit of a peach uh, liqueur. We're gonna finish it just a little bit of purslane forged right around here. Purslane is a wild weed. It's got a great flavor, nice and crisp. Just gonna stick it into the side of the cheese so it doesn't fly away on us. There you have it. Alex, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, great food. Remember, you can enjoy a specially prepared dinner at Alex's restaurant by purchasing the Chef Premium Package. Just get right to delcoliteracy.org and that is just gonna be a great donation to so many people who need the services. Well, it gives me great, great pleasure to introduce the 2021 Hometown Hero Champion of Adult Literacy, Dr. Monica Taylor. Dr. Taylor is Vice Chair of the Council, the County Council in Delaware County. She is the Workforce Liaison for, council, or for the County Council, so her leadership has a direct impact on the DCLC students who are working to improve their skills and land a family sustaining job. That's the big picture, a career. Dr. Taylor has also been instrumental in helping Delaware County plan and develop the soon to be launched County Health Department, which is a much needed resource that's gonna benefit all Delaware County residents. So Dr. Taylor, congratulations on being named a champion of adult literacy. Thank you, Lucy. And thank you to the Delaware County Literacy Council. I am honored to accept this award tonight. The Delaware County Literacy Council was formed 46 years ago in 1975 by community members in Chester who noticed their neighbors were struggling because their reading, writing, and math skills weren't strong. In the past 46 years, more than 20,000 adults have chosen the Literacy Council as a place to achieve their goals. Some are new immigrants seeking English language skills so they can restart careers they pursued in their home countries. Some are residents returning from incarceration who are ready for a second chance. Some never finished high school and are striving to earn their GED. And some are working to overcome challenges and need a little encouragement and a safe place to learn. During the pandemic, the Literacy Council moved most of its services online. Thanks to the resilience of their staff, volunteers, and students, they were able to serve many residents throughout the community in an online setting. When Pennsylvania enacted the COVID-19 shutdown in March of 2020, over 270 adults were at attending DCLC classes at locations across the county. DCLC reached out to each and every student to ha ask how they were dealing with the pandemic and to determine their ability and willingness to handle online learning situations. Based on that outreach, students were able to successfully transition to an online learning format, and DCLC assisted students with information on how to access local food banks and other COVID-19 resources. This is remarkable. Thank you for all of your dedication. I share your passion and wanting to help our residents succeed and live healthy and meaningful lives. As a mom of three daughters and a professor, I understand the value of literacy. Literacy plays a vital role in transforming people into socially engaged and healthy members of our community. Being able to read and write allows us to keep up with current events, communicate effectively, and understand the issues that are shaping our world today. To the staff and volunteers at Delaware County Literacy Th Council, thank you for this award. Thank you for working each and every day to improve the lives of our residents. I'm honored to be named a champion of literacy 
And I vow to continue to help you champion this cause around our county. Thank you. Dr. Taylor, congratulations once again. I think it's time to check in now with our thermometer and see how things are going. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Allison Preby, also a member of the DCLC staff. Thank you so much for giving. If you haven't done so, please go to delcoliteracy.org and help us reach our telethon goal of $50,000. Let's take a look at our total so far. Well, that's great. With all your help, we're up to $9,228.89. We hope you'll join all of the generous DCLC supporters and make a donation. Your gift makes a difference in the lives of local adults. That's, DC, uh, that's delcoliteracy.org. And don't forget to check out the link to premium packages while you're there. Thank you so much. Now back to the show. All right, now we have a real treat for you, an expert workshop on writing for television, guys, Phil Rosenthal, the creator and producer of the beloved TV comedy, Everybody Loves Raymond. He's also the creator and the host of Somebody Feed Phil, which is an unscripted documentary series currently running on Netflix that combines his love of food and travel with the really unique brand of humor. So Phil is married to actress Monica Horan Rosenthal, a Delaware County native, and everybody loves these two fans of everybody loves Raymond will recognize Monica as Amy McDougal Barone from the show. Monica actually has been very gracious to moderate the workshop by interviewing her own husband, Phil, about comedy writing. So please enjoy this revealing look inside the mind of a comedy writer writing for television, how I made my life into a sitcom. Hi, and welcome to the Delaware County Literacy Council, Expert Academy, Online Telethon Masterclass, Writing for Television, How I Made My Life into a Sitcom, with the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond, Phil Rosenthal. Greetings. I'm Monica Horan Rosenthal, Amy from Everybody Loves Raymond, and I'm also married to Phil. What a coincidence. <laughs> Oh, Phil, you're, thank you for joining me in the family room for thank your you. class. I was here anyway. <laughs> Did you like the title, by the way? I think it's a very classy title. I came up with that. Makes yeah. me sound very good. You're, you're very good. Thank it's you. Very good. Um, and I thought, Phil, that we could use your book, You're Lucky, You're Funny, How Life Becomes a Sitcom, as kind of like a little template for the class. Yes. Um, and I did want to mention that in the book, you do refer to me as your sweet and lovely bride, Monica. That was written a long time very ago. Very long, very long time ago. But she's still sweet and lovely and a beautiful shill for the book. <laughs> well, I thought it was a good tie-in with the De Delaware County Literacy Council. Yes. And I think we'll be sending your book to the council. Yes. yes. So, Philip. Yes. This is a class about writing for television. Yes. So I think we would start with the question, did you always want to be a writer? No. What did you want to be? I thought I was going to be an actor. I thought I would be a comedic actor because that's what I saw on TV. I watched The Honeymooners and The Dick Van Dyke Show and shows like that and all my family. And I thought, oh, they're funny. I want to be like them. So that's what I pursued in school and I was encouraged to do so. I was a big star in high school and college. And then when I moved into New York after college, New York didn't care that I was a big <laughs> star in high school and college. And so I struggled for several years uh, not everything was terrible, met a nice girl, but I couldn't uh, really get a job acting or even an agent. And uh, then some friends of ours uh, and I wrote a show for ourselves to be in. And that turned into something successful. And at the same time, my friend Alan came over to my house with a word processor. Your parents might know what that is. It was a predecessor to the computer. And we 
wrote a screenplay and we sold it. Our very first thing, we sold it to HBO for a lot of money. I went from being a, a hundred air to being a thousand air <laughs> and from eating tuna fish for dinner as an actor to eating whatever I wanted as a writer. <laughs> and so that decision was made for me. Then I moved to Hollywood and I, you know, started to write spec scripts. A spec script is a script you write for free to demonstrate that you know how to write a script. And there are classes you can take in that, in how to write a specific sitcom, for example, or if you're a drama writer, there's classes you can take to write dramas or novels or screenplays. So I always recommend that to people. What, what sitcoms did, and how did you pick what spec script to write? Well, I had had odd jobs uh, in, in my years in New York, struggling. Like I was a guard at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And I worked from midnight to eight in the morning one shift, and I wasn't very good at it. In fact, I was so bad at it that I fell asleep on a 300-year-old bed during my shift. And they don't really like when you do that <laughs> at the museum. And so I was fired, and it was humiliating. It was the worst thing that ever happened to me. But about seven years later, when I was in Hollywood and wondering what spec script I should write, we thought of Roseanne, which was on at the time, that was 1989, my, my partner and I, but what are we gonna write about? I said, well, what if her husband gets a night job because he needs extra money at the local museum and he falls asleep on a 300 year old bed? And we wrote this and we sent it around town and all the agents and the studios were saying, what an imagination, we have to hire <laughs> these people. So that was, you know, you never know what's gonna be your break. It, yeah. you, I tell everybody, get as many jobs as you can because writing comes from real life and you can't write about real life unless you have one. And you also say, quite often, write what you know. Yes. And so... That's not just me who says it. Yeah. Many people have said that for many years. <laughs> I didn't come up with that. But it turns out to be true. You, you all have individuality that's what separates you from the person you're sitting next to or across from you or down the street your your personality is everything you've experienced filtered through the way you think so use that whenever you can because only you have that your experience filtered through the way you think only you have that and so write what you know comes directly from that and also, you, 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 I remember you talking about a template, though, because you can write, and there's short stories, there's screenplays, there's right. all that, but for sitcom in particular, was there some class you took or some way that you I, learned that form? I had a mentor. I had Alan Kirschenbaum, who was my friend from high school, who had been doing this, and, and he understood the structure of a sitcom, it's very specific, and you can go to class to learn that. Mm -hmm. I just happen to have him. But for those of you who don't have him, <laughs> go to take a class because you can learn, anyone can learn the template, the structure of the sitcom, right? What you can't learn is being funny or having talent, but you won't find out until you take the class and write something. The class is great because at the very least, you're gonna exit that class with a script. That's what every class does, is makes you write a script. So if you need that extra right. discipline and that extra that deadline. kick in the butt, that's the, mm -hmm. that's the best uh, way. And don't you have a good story? I mean, this is very rare that something like this would happen. But didn't you actually give that advice to a new writer? Yeah. And then that writer took the class and her teacher and that writer, Cindy Shupak, yes. ended up writing on the show, right? ended up writing on Raymond because yes. I saw their work. She sent me the work that she had done in the class with her teacher who became her, her partner, partner and I hired yeah. them both. Amazing. That's a very unique story. Um, you can go on with anything else, but I, I have that question. I also want to share with people when you say always quit, what do you mean? That's another thing. Just like write what you know, but you all also say always quit. Is that jumping ahead to already getting a show on the air? Yes, I think once it, that, that comes from, you know, you, when, you, when you're young and hungry, you need to take any job. I don't say always mm -hmm. quit to you. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a position to have it your way, and let's say you're writing a show about your family, let's say, and they wanna change it. Well, 
I felt, for example, writing about my family, that I knew what I was writing about better than them. Uh, wasn't an ego thing. It was just, they don't know my family as well as I do. And I know this to be true. Now, I did have some confidence because I had been working for about five years writing sitcoms on other people's show. And I knew what I liked and I knew what I didn't like. That's very important. So if someone comes along and wants you to change something so uh, uh, inherently important in your work, you, you, you listen very carefully. There might be a good note in there. But if you can't go along with it and you think they're ruining it, well, I say quit because you're not gonna get that chance again. Now this is if, you know, you're not gonna have to sell your house or not gonna have right. to you know, worry about where your next meal is coming from. But it goes to integrity and it turns out that when you quit, at least in the, in the cases, most of the cases that I've had where I've quit, they've always come back because they thought, oh, maybe he knows something that we don't know. Mm -hmm. However, you have to be prepared for it not, not to work, to work out. out. But if it doesn't, I always think it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. It would have been terrible anyway. So that's what I mean by always quit. But I don't, when I say always quit, I don't mean always quit. <laughs> so why don't you talk about some of those earlier jobs then and how the, and what it's like to write maybe on not, you know. Well, it's a job, you know, you yeah. can learn how to do that job from any uh, show about how shows work and what a writer's room is like and uh, what the what the schedule is like and and you're going to learn things that you love to do and want to incorporate when you might be in charge and you're going to learn just as much if not more about what not to do but that's life in general isn't it i'm sure everyone's had a job where they thought well, if i ran the thing I think I wouldn't do what this guy is doing. And so that's that's just natural. I worked, my first show that I worked on, that I got hired for, was as a staff writer with my partner on the Robert Mitchum sitcom. Now, a lot of people uh, who, uh, who are younger don't even know who Robert Mitchum is, but he was an actor from the 1940s and 50s, and he was a tough guy. And your parents, if you tell them the Robert Mitchum sitcom, they would say, why is he in a sitcom? Which is what the whole audience thought as well. And uh, yet, I learned a lot. I learned about how to write on a sitcom. Very good, very good. Yes. Did you ever do any other kind of writing before that? Again, uh, uh, wrote the play with my friends and I wrote the screenplay with my friend Alan. and. and uh, that was pretty much it for writing. I didn't really think I was gonna be a writer, but now I'm a writer. But even when you were little, you kind of were the Toastmaster, weren't you? When for I was little? <laughs> when I was little, I was, I guess I was a, a little Toastmaster. Yes, I would, <laughs> I would try to stay up late and I would try to make jokes and I would try to be funny so that I could stay up late with, with them and have some cake. <laughs> So is there any other uh, advice, especially now that, I mean, everybody loves Raymond. What year did that premiere? Was it 90? 25 years ago this year. Yeah. 1996. Congratulations. Congratulations to you, Amy. Oh, thank you. So now that that was so long ago and you're writing now, how, what advice would you have for people in this climate, in this uh it's what Maybe I would tell my... There's so much material, there's so much content out there, and there's so many different avenues. It's, it's what I tell our own kids, and that is, uh, stop eating all my food. No, I, <laughs> I say, please uh, write your own ticket, because no one is out there going to write it for you. You have to, if you want to, let's say, be in a show, you should write that show. If you want to be in a movie, you should write that movie because, and, and you have the phone. The phone is this wonderful studio in your pocket. Mm. You can shoot it, record it, edit it, and then push one button and it's, it's out there to the world. So if you're good, it's going to get out there. Now, my first advice before you just go off half cocked and, and, <laughs> and shoot something is take the class so you know in advance that you have the skills mm. to do it. And that class might also involve 
shooting on the iPhone. That's a class, mm -hmm. right? Making yeah. a movie on an iPhone. Mm -hmm. You might want to invest in, you know, more equipment, but you'll need a class in how to work that stuff, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but make it yourself is, is the key to everything. Nobody's going to just hand you uh, your career. And in a way, we did that when we were writing our own shows and doing that, but it is a very different thing now because of just technology being involved, the access to so much. But it almost, in some ways, seems harder because there of is... Of all the competition. Yeah, of all the competition. Well, anyone can make a TikTok, but at the same time, anyone can make a TikTok that gets millions of views. Yeah. And they do give people shows who get millions of views. Right. The trick is how to be good enough to get millions of views. And also how to have blinders on so that you're really just focused on your own material, your own story, your own voice. Um, that I think is harder that for people today than it was when we were doing it. It was easier to stick in our own lane when you didn't constantly have, you know, in your face what everybody else was doing. How are you able to just like really focus and-, and I'm not. <laughs> Who said anything that I'm good at focusing? I'm not. I, I, I mean, I've been very lucky also. You know, luck is a good part, uh, uh, good thing to have. <laughs> I recommend being lucky. And, and uh, but we, we were always confronted with, uh, maybe not to the extent where you can see how everyone in the world is doing compared to you nowadays, but we had our friends and they were either doing better or worse than us and we we you know if you're a human being you can't help but compare your progress to other human beings it's just way easier now to maybe what your point is to get distracted the phone can also be this you know it's this powerful powerful tool that we can use for good but it can also be the worst distraction in the world even the computer that i write on is connected to the world's biggest distraction yeah. So that's hard. So when you say you're focused, no, I, that, I'll, I, I jump at the chance to, to look at the internet and, and do anything else but write. And one of the things that's really funny to me is when he started, you wrote like Mark Twain. You would be in bed with the legal pad writing, um, and that was a discipline. I'm exactly like Mark Twain. <laughs> On that note, Philip, is there any other wisdom you'd like to impart to the students? I'm going to give you the best advice I ever got. And it was from an old showrunner that I worked for. When I was writing the pilot of Everybody Loves Raymond, I asked him for advice. And he said this, do the show you want to do, because in the end, they're going to cancel you anyway. That's my advice to you. Do the show you want to do. That's a philosophy of life. Live your life, people. Excellent. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Monica. You're I, welcome in my house anytime. <laughs> sure. And thank you all for watching Philip's Masterclass. And thank you for supporting the Delaware County Literacy Council. That was amazing. Phil, Monica, thank you both. Just a great time watching you. And now it's time for a quick look at the fundraising progress at this point. Good evening, everyone. I'm Robert Lee, and I, too, am a member of the DCLC staff. I hope you've enjoyed all the great workshops. We're here to celebrate adult literacy and support the free literacy services provided by Delaware County Literacy Council. Thanks for your generous donations. Let's check the thermometer to see if we're closer to reaching our $50,000 goal. It looks like we're getting closer. Your generosity has helped us get to $11,582, uh, but don't stop now. Go to delcoliteracy.org and check out the premium packages link while you're there. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, and do not forget to get those donations in. Go to delcoliteracy.org, and while you're there, check out the premium packages available from our experts. Everything tonight has been incredibly inspiring. I know I've learned a lot, but this next interview is going to remind us why we're here, why you and I care about Delaware County Literacy Council, because of the adults who come to DCLC to change their lives. 
and you're actually about to meet one of those amazing people. We're now going to honor our student champion, Tamaji Kentangar. Tamaji has reached some significant milestones since coming to the United States just a few years ago. His hard work and concern for others is just compelling. So to hear all about it and to celebrate Tamaji as the 2021 student champion of adult literacy, let's welcome Tamaji, who will be interviewed by Everybody Loves Raymond Starr, Monica Horan Rosenthal. Hello, I'm Monica Horan Rosenthal. You remember me from earlier. Right now, it is my privilege to introduce Tamaji Kantangar. Tamaji is the 2021 student champion of adult literacy for Delaware County Literacy Council. Tamaji is originally from Chad in Central Africa, and he is pursuing a career in supply chain management and logistics. An incredible human being. I am so happy to introduce Tamaji. Thank you, Monica. Thank you for having me. So I think the first thing that I want to know is how you came to find the Delaware County Literacy Council. What brought you here? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, when I arrived at uh, the United States of America, the first thing I thought was to improve my English communication. Mm -hmm. uh, so I used to travel to New York mm -hmm. twice a week uh, to learn English at the uh, American Lang Center language. And uh, my friend, uh, Rene Erickson, told me about the, the, the Delaware, uh, the D, DCLC. And uh, since then, I, I became uh, a member of uh, this uh, entity. What were your, um, when you came here, speaking English obviously is a huge goal, but what was your greater goal in coming here in the first place to the United States and, and to also uh, use the language that you are learning? Uh, yes. Uh, in 2008, uh, I was watching the TV and I saw uh, children were dying because there was a lack of uh, logistics. So I decided to, to let the, the job, the construction job that I had before and apply to uh, uh, save the children. Uh, when I went there, uh, we, we, we were working in, in front line and uh, we lost our uh, manager. And uh, since then the office was closed and I uh, applied to UNICEF uh, to work for, for the children. Uh, since I, I came to visit my, my, my wife uh, here in the United States. And when I arrived, she complained because I used to see her every two years. That's why I decided to go back and start learning and uh, uh, to help me adapting to the new, new life in the United States. Wow. You, you're a marathoner, not a sprinter. That's really, that takes a lot for two years <laughs> to get together with your wife and to be so devoted to your work. You're, you're, you're a global thinker. It, it, it's very clear. So... That's a lot of work. So you were working for UNICEF at that time before you came here and yes. saved the children. Wow, that's amazing. And so what was the process, if you don't mind my asking, that you went through with the council when you, so you, you found out this through a friend and then what was the first step? And then how did he, it evolve to these other career advice you know, and what kind of advice and, and how, how is that, um, what were the logistics, I guess I should say? Yeah, first when I arrived at the center, they, they tested me, I passed the test and uh, uh, they, they, they show me which level I, I should uh, be. Mm -hmm. So after the test, uh, I was with the teacher uh, Khalil uh, mm -hmm. for some time and in meantime, uh, do, uh, when I went, I was taking class. Uh, I was also registered with uh, Wilma, uh, 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 my 
and prime and coach. So we were working on a resume, mm -hmm. a motivation letter, and also on the career because uh, I did construction. And uh, uh, as I explain you, uh, since I discovered that uh, the need for logistian is important, uh, my goal is to have a degree in uh, operation and supply chain management. You know, <clears throat> your story, excuse me, is uh, it's so inspirational on so many levels. I mean, just the, the ability to um, locate it, uh, you know, uh, react, respond to an issue that you're observing and you already made a living, you had a job you were with construction and now you are deciding to build something else entirely and the work it takes and the humility it takes to go back and learn and being in that position of the unknown and it's very vulnerable, mm -hmm. but I think you're such a great um, example to people to say, you know, it's possible. There are people out there. We hear so many things about of negative in the world and the majority of us are working together, not against. And so I think that this is another great reason for, um, you know, wh why we're so happy that, that you will share your story in this way, because we always want to make this available to others and it's, but it takes so much work and that's why you're a hero. That's why you get this award because it's not, typical and many times we have to keep going back and going back and trying again but you've had an amazing trajectory so you are I, I heard that you also you had not even planned to become a citizen what was that inspiration and journey to then go for your citizenship uh, yes when I figured out that uh, uh, the life the life uh, people around me uh, mm -hmm. uh, are amazing and uh, and uh, the the country offered the opportunity to to learn uh, at the same time you can uh, still do uh, the job that will 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 pay you and mm -hmm. at the same time you have also some opportunity to help people in need uh, mm -hmm. i i decide to to become a citizen and uh, mm -hmm. and do like uh, do the same thing that uh, at the center, uh, the, the Delaware Council, uh, yeah, people do for me. So wow. I said, okay, uh, uh, I will, uh, I decide to apply for the citizenship. And uh, uh, for doing that, I was thinking in two ways. Either go to the lawyer, take lawyer to help me. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I thought, I say, if in the education, uh, the DCLC helped me, in the same way, if I go and I meet them, they can also do the same thing for me. That's why I went to the office and I met Deb and I talked talk her about the, the process. And uh, she said, oh, I, uh, Peter can help you. Peter can help you because uh, Peter usually do for other students. So if you you available, I will make appointment with Peter and you will follow the steps. Is there anything that I haven't that you would like to say to anybody out there listening? Uh, I I am proud. I am proud to uh, to know uh, the DCLC, uh, and uh, if today I I arrive to have uh, uh, first, uh, this means a lot for me. Yeah, this this means really a lot for me. Uh, when I look at uh, every time I I remember how good uh, people are uh, around me, how good people are in uh, DCLC, mm -hmm. and uh, if there are someone that uh, is listening to me, uh, they can go to the 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 DCLC for any any issue about their education. Uh, they will meet. Uh, uh, wonderful people that can can help them, and uh, don't let your age discourage you to to learn, because uh, when you go there, they know exactly uh, where they will put you to learn. And uh, for people who want to support the DCLC, 
if you want to invest, uh, DCLC is a good, uh, good thing to do. So you can help uh, people like they help me uh, to, to succeed in my education. And uh, I know the most important thing is to be educated. When you are educated, uh, you can change life, you can impact uh, the world, uh, change, uh, improve the life of people around you. Thank you, Tamaji. It's been an honor to get to speak to you. Thank you. I look forward to the next time. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you again for your time and uh, for everything you guys do for me. Good evening, everyone. Hello, I'm Rick Durante. And I'm Jen Stock. Jen and I are co-presidents of the Delaware County Literacy Council's Board of Directors. We're extremely grateful that you could join us for this exciting evening of learning and of celebrating adult literacy. On behalf of the entire board, we would like to congratulate this year's champions, Tamaji Kantigar, Neighbor to Neighbor, and Dr. Monica Taylor. We would also like to thank our sponsors, especially our major and supporting sponsors, including Franklin Mint Federal Credit Union, Sun East Federal Credit Union, Pico and Brinker Simpson. And thanks to our experts and special guests too. You really made the evening special. And of course, thanks most of all to everyone who donated this evening and helped our fundraising thermometer keep rising and rising. We consider you champions of adult literacy too. All of you who shared your time, talent, and treasure are truly making a difference in the lives of our students, helping them take steps to develop their reading, writing, math, and English language skills so they can thrive in the workplace and the community. We thank you. Yes, thank you so much and good night. Good night. Thank you, Rick and Jen, and thank you to all of our sponsors. We're trying to reach that $50,000 mark, so let's check in one more time, see how we're doing, and remember guys, you can share the donate information with your friends and your family after the event. On behalf of Allison and Kevin and myself, we want to thank you so much for your generous support this evening. It's drum roll time. Our total for the evening is $18,734. Great job, everyone. Remember, you can still donate at dalcoliteracy.org even after the telethon is over and you can purchase a premium package from now until October 30th. Have a wonderful evening. That is an amazing result. Thank you so much for donating. It has been wonderful to be with you tonight. A very big thank you goes to all of you who joined us for the telethon, especially to those who donated. We also want to thank our experts, our sponsors, your wonderful, our special guests, our champions, and all of the inspiring students, especially who study at the Literacy Council. After watching those expert workshops, we see what it means to be a beginner and to be brave enough to try something new just like the students who take that big, brave step to change their lives just by showing up at the Literacy Council. I hope that we will leave you singing, thinking of delicious food, and finding those funny moments in your life that just might become a TV script. Thank you for supporting Delaware County Literacy Council. Good night and be well.